Hello fellow Scratchers, are you ready for some wall jumping action? I'm Griff Patch and I'm so excited to get started today on part 5 of our classic platformer series. Because we are adding not your bog standard scratch wall jumping, where players go bouncing right at walls, no indeed, we'll be doing things the right way, with superb wall sliding, enhanced jumping and epic parkour style jumping between walls. This is going to make your project so fun to play, you wait and see. Well what are we waiting for? Let's get scratching! Picking up from where we left off on episode 4, save your projects as a new copy and change the name. There. Episode 5. Cool! We'll begin by upgrading our jumping scripts. The first jumping mechanic we're going to address is the perpetual jumping. Scroll in the code to find the define controls up and down script. So as I hold down the jump key without releasing it, my player bounces around like a jack-in-the-box. This can be kind of fun, but it doesn't offer us much control and makes jumping far less purposeful. To improve this, we'll make it so that each jump requires an individual press of the jump key. We can accomplish this by adding a new variable, naming it jumping, for this sprite only. Then, with an AND block, we keep the check for falling being less than 3. The number 3 here means we can jump as long as we've touched the ground within the last 3 frames. In other words, very recently indeed. But now, we'll also require the jumping variable to equal 0. Then, as soon as we jump, we set jumping to 1. This will stop us jumping again until the variable goes back to 0. If we test that, we do indeed get just one good jump. And then, nope. Like a chocolate frog, we're done. No more jumping for us. And here's the trick. We need to swap this if for an if-else block. Make sure the change speed y is underneath, and the jump key press is here, and the if goes back in the then branch. Ok sweet, because now this else only triggers when the jump key is released. So we can set jumping back to zero, all ready for a fresh new jump. Let's test this now. So I hold the jump key. We get a single jump, and the jumping variable stays on one. When we release the jump key, the jumping variable goes back to zero, and then we are free to jump again. Excellent! This is a very nice feature to have in your game. But we have a problem. Did you notice our jumping is no longer as powerful as it used to be? We're not getting the same height we used to get. This is because in the past we not only set speed y to jump force when the jump key was first pressed, but also kept doing this until the falling was no longer less than 3. This gave us a few extra frames of full jumping power. It was nice, as it also let us change how high we jump by holding the jump key slightly longer. Well, we still want this feature, let's try to put it back in. To do this we'll separate the jump trigger, this script, from the actual jumping action. Pull out the set speed y block, we'll use this in a moment. In its place we'll set falling to 3. Every jump will start on a consistent falling value now. Now bring in a new if block. We'll check for when we've started a jump. That is, when jumping is greater than 0. But we want a limit on how long we jump for. So, with an AND block, also check for jumping being less than 6. So we can change jumping by 1. And finally, bring back the set speed y block to power the player upwards. Shall we give that a test? You should see us getting the full jump power for up to 6 frames, as long as we keep the jump key held down. However, by tapping the jump key, we only get 1 or 2 frames of thrust and the jump is much shorter. Excellent work! This is a lot more stable than the system we had before. Before we proceed, let's be good coders and wrap this 6 value in a variable constant. Make a new variable naming it jump duration. Use it in place of this number 6. Then find the when green flag clicked, wow our scripts are really building up, and set jump duration to 6. As always, 
don't just try one value. Why not stuff in some over the top value like uh, 20 and try it out? Here we go. Woohoo! That is one crazy jump. That's hilarious. I can still do those smaller jumps. But if I hold down, whee, it's more like, I don't know, a jetpack joyride or something. How fun. OK, I'll stop playing. Set that back to six and hide those variables. Let's move on. This next design choice may be a little bit more contentious. In many Scratch platformers, when the player jumps, releasing the walk key while in the air causes them to slow down and stop, even in mid-flight. It's not very true to life, but more than this. For our wall jumping to work well, we need the player to be able to soar through the air to pull off those awesome stunts. Find with me the Define Controls left and right scripts. At the bottom of the script here, we are slowing down the player movement. This is fine for when we are on the ground, but not so fine when in the air. Scroll back up to where we check for key X being equal to zero. That is, when the left and right arrow keys are not pressed down. Drag in a new if right at the top. Check for when we are in the air, if falling is greater than two. So we are in the air and not pressing left and right. So how do we stop ourselves slowing down so much? I'm going to duplicate the slowing down script, the set speed x to speed x multiplied by and bring it up here. But remove resistance. This has a value of 0.8 in my project. I'm going to use a value much closer to 1, uh, say 0.98, to slow the player down far less when in the air. As always, try some different values in here to have some fun. Finally, we stop the script to prevent us slowing down further. Press the green flag. I'm going to do the same jump, releasing the run key. Oh wow, yeah, I'm not falling straight down anymore. Nope, my player continues to sail onwards through the air until we land safely on the other side. Or, or slip off. <laughs> I guess we have to be a lot more careful with our jumps now. I'm overestimating how much speed I need because I'm so used to just letting go of the key to slow down. Perhaps you may want to use a lower value than 0.98 after all. This certainly is starting to make the game more of a challenge anyhow. But as with any game, the more you play it, the more you get good at it. And soon enough, you've got it mastered. Right, moving swiftly on. Wall sliding. This is where the player can, when in contact with a wall, slowly slide down it. We have to be careful to only activate this behaviour at the right moment. For example, simply walking into a wall should not be enough. Instead, we need to be in the air when the contact occurs. And a slide shouldn't be triggered by just our head or feet touching a platform. No, we'll say it should be a central collision around the area of our player's waist. Lastly, the slide must end when the player touches the ground, or when they lose contact with the wall. OK, so we detect wall collisions in the Clyde X slope or wall script. This seems a good place to begin. Make a new custom block for this, naming it Check Can Wall Slide. Run without screen refresh. Just move it over here and drop the new block in as the first block in the Clyde X script. Great, so let's craft this new custom block. We'll first rule out when we don't want a wall slide. If falling is less than two. Then we're on the ground, so no sliding is possible. To record this fact, make yet another new variable. Yeah, I'm sorry about this, it happens. Naming it wall slide for this sprite only. So we're on the ground. We set wall slide to zero. Then since we are not sliding, stop this script. Next, we want to check whether we are in the contact with a suitable wall for sliding down. For this, we'll use a new hitbox. Set costume to... OK, what do we have available? Look at the costumes. Hitbox version 2 was costume 21. And the very next one, it's called hitbox wall slide. That name gives it away, doesn't it? So look at how I've positioned it. If I overlay it with the scratch cat, you can see it's positioned to one side. 
kind of like an arm, reaching out to the right. It's narrow, so that it won't trigger for platforms above or below us, but only when they're right in front. You can move this around to find your sweet spot, but this should do for right now. Back to the scripts. Switch the costume to hitbox wall slide. We just need to be careful though. This hitbox requires us to set rotation style to left and right. Otherwise, it will only detect walls to the right of us, and that would be no good. Next, check touching solid. If the hitbox touched a wall in front of us, then we now could test if touching is greater than zero. But why not just set wall slide to the value of touching directly? If there's a wall in front of us, then wall slide will be set to one. Otherwise, a zero means no wall sliding. Nice. With that done, we should return the costume to hitbox version 2 and the rotation mode back to don't rotate. OK, click the green flag and let's run into a wall. Good, the wall slide variable stays at zero. Next we jump. Aha, the wall slide variable changes to a one. That's great. Oh, but wait, it remains on one long after we've moved away from the wall. Well, not to worry. We'll address this in a second as we code up the wall sliding scripts. Back to the code and find the define controls up and down this time. The last block in this script is handling gravity. This will be a great place to implement the wall sliding as we want to slow down the player as they slide down a wall. If wall slide is greater than zero, then we are indeed wall sliding. But we should check again in case, as we saw, the wall slide has ended. Use another check can wall slide block. Now to slow the player down while on the wall. Set speed y to speed y multiplied by 0 0.6. Get another value to play around with. The closer to zero this value is, the slower our player will slide down the wall. Testing. So we jump into the first wall. Splat, yes, we have a very sticky face apparently. Brilliant. And on this wall, oh nice. Do you see how the wall slide finishes as we lose contact with the wall? That's just what we were after. But hold on, there is an issue. Look what happens when I try to jump up a wall that I'm touching. I can only manage a tiny jump. That's no good. The wall jump code is slowing down my upwards movement as well as my sliding down. The simplest remedy is to wrap the set speed y in an if and check for speed y being less than zero. That way it won't slow down any upwards movements and I should be free to jump up the wall still. Cool, here we go. Jump up against the wall and now the upwards motion is restored and only the downward motion is slowed. Excellent. So any more issues? Ha, actually just one. It's easy to show you if I make a little change to the level costumes. We need one of the walls to be rotated to form a very steep incline. OK, now do you see how when I wall slide down this, the player is being pushed away from the wall? This is when I'm not pressing any keys. Do you know why? Find the define controls left and right scripts again. So this is the code that lets us travel through the air without slowing down. We just added this. Now, the condition for this occurring is when we are not on the ground, but it doesn't include when we are wall sliding. The result is that we can now drift away from the wall too easily. Still, easy to resolve, add an AND with the falling check on the left, and now introduce a check for wall slide being less than 1. That ensures the script that keeps us moving in the air no longer applies when wall sliding. Just give it a test and ensure that we've fixed that issue. Yep, great. The real joy of this platforming engine is that we are able to pull off these great moves even on uneven walls like this one. It should mean we'll be able to design some really cool levels. All we need to do now to complete this slide is to improve the visuals. Check out our costumes again. Scroll down to costume 19, it's named Hang On 01. 
<laughs> this one is an interesting costume. As you can see, it's designed to give the impression of holding or sliding down a surface to the right. Interestingly, that this is the only costume to be facing to the left. But this is very purposeful. Remember, as we touch a wall, we will be facing towards it. So now, switching to this costume makes it appear to face away from the wall. We'll give this a go and you'll see what I mean. Find the Define Set Costume script. We deal with all the player costumes in here. Right away, after the first set rotation style, check if Wall Slide is greater than zero. This means we are wall sliding. So, switch costumes to Hang On 01 and then stop this script. We are done. OK, let's go. Jump against the wall and look at this slide. Oh, it's beautiful. I'm loving how this looks. It's worth noting, if you are still using a cube for your player costume, then you may not need a new costume for wall sliding at all. Simply leave the set costume scripts as they were and it will look just fine. So my goodness, this is it. We are ready to add the final step, the actual wall jump itself. For this, we need to find our jumping code again. It's in the define controls up and down script. The first if, where we are jumping, is the trigger for a jump. Now we will add another one for wall jumping. Duplicate the first if block and place it above the others so it's the first action in the key press script. Now rather than triggering when we jump from touching a surface, that's what the falling lesson 3 does, we look for a wall slide being greater than zero. Yeah, this triggers a jump while we are sliding down a wall. We start by setting wall slide back to zero. Since we are jumping off the wall now, we will have to do more than this though, but let's just give it a test to see how it looks right now. If I begin a wall slide and then jump, great, did you see that? I was able to jump, but I went straight up and also got turned around to face back to the wall once more. A proper wall jump should have had me launching away from the wall surface, not bounding right up it. <laughs> right, so let's turn the player around by 180 degrees. That will have them facing the correct way away from the wall. Then launch them away from the wall by setting speed x to, um, hmm, okay. We'll take the current direction, that's 90 for right and minus 90 for left, and divide that by 90. That will give us either a 1 or a minus 1, depending which way they are facing. Then we are free to multiply that by our desired jump speed. 7 will do, I think. Oh yeah, I am looking forward to this. Hit the green flag. And woohoo, look at us go. Now jumping off a wall launches us across the level, away from the wall. And what's more, if we land on the opposite wall, we begin a new wall slide and can jump right back again. That's really neat, don't you agree? So let's just check, is there anything wrong with this? Okay, yeah. If we pull back towards the wall as we jump off it, we can still change direction and land back on the same wall. This lets us wall jump up and up a single wall of our game. This is perhaps a gaming mechanic you actually quite enjoy in your game, so don't feel bad if you want to keep it just like this. But in our tutorial, we are striving for excellence and as such we want to stop the player from pulling off this stunt. To fix things, we are going to force the player to jump further away from the wall before we allow them to turn back again. Make a new variable naming it long jump for this sprite only. As soon as we've jumped away from the wall, here, set long jump to 12. So, for a count of 12 game frames, we'll stop the player changing their direction of travel. Find the define controls left and right scripts again. Stick in an if block right at the top. And if long jump is greater than zero, we want to prevent all changes of direction. So start by changing long jump by minus one to count it backwards down to zero. And then simply stop this script. That will stop any further changes to the player's direction. Well, that was a bit too easy, right? Let's give it a test. Smash the green flag one last time.
So now I'm jumping off this left wall and I'm trying to pull back and no, the game is having none of it. I am completely unable to cheat my way back onto the original wall I jumped from. But if I go with it and let myself land on the opposite wall, then I'm quite free to wall jump back once more and again and again to jump up these walls in style. Yes, this is just perfect for creating some epic level designs. But just before we finish, can we just be good coders and update our define, reset and begin level script? We have a few new variables that we should be resetting as the level begins. Set wall slide to zero. Set jumping to zero and set long jump to zero. Stuff them in after the rest of the set blocks. Great stuff! So with that, our episode is done. Time to start playing around with your level designs. Try to build out a fun parkour course to jump your way across. I simply cannot wait to see what you guys can put together. I've included a link under the video to the Scratch Studio where you can submit your projects from episode 5. It's so fun looking through them and I hope to include a few in the next video to show off what you've been achieving. They're already blowing my mind so go to town and let me see what you can do. So awesome! Along with that, we've also got some really exciting episodes ahead of us. The fact we can now jump up and climb so high is just begging us to add up and down scene changes. But we also need those moving platforms. Dead excited for that. And don't forget collectibles, enemies, danger sprites, so much to look forward to. Okay, well, I do hope you've enjoyed watching today. Do smash the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest videos. If you're a loyal fan or an educator, then please consider joining the channel membership, which helps support the channel further. You can also get extra perks like prioritised comments, channel emoji, early access to videos and even the finished tutorial projects themselves. How about that? So thank you for watching, have a great week ahead and scratch on guys.